In many medieval castles around the world, oubliettes can be found. These are dungeons and prison cells in which a prisoner could be lowered into and simply left to rot. The term oubliette comes from the French term to forget, and someone unfortunate enough to find themselves inside one could wish their fate and death would occur as soon as possible. This form of torture and execution, in a sense, was used during the medieval period. However, comparisons can be drawn from the oubliette to a more modern time, a time in which immense cruelty and barbarism was imposed upon mass groups of people during the Holocaust. Today we look at the Auschwitz oubliettes, the standing cells. Remember to support our channel, please make sure to subscribe. An oubliette in its simplest form is a dungeon or a cell in which a prisoner was just left to rot inside. It would have been used in the medieval period to house political prisoners and was found underground in a secluded area or part of a castle. One example of these is at Warwick Castle in which the oubliette is a small tiny cell that could seemingly barely fit a human. Inside here the prisoner would have just been left with the rats and the elements making their imminent demise and death completely horrific. It was also sometimes used as a place for psychological torture for a prisoner to suffer in in order to extract information and also inflict a deterrent onto someone. The main form of torture itself in the oubliette was the loneliness and limited interaction but also the limited space available to move around inside. They were usually incredibly tight spaces and cells and many prisoners would have only been able to have held themselves in one position. Some cells were such strange shapes that the unfortunate soul inside may have had to crouch all day, sit in an awkward position, or even worse, stand for 24 hours. It would have been a horrific feeling to have been forced to stand for 24 hours a day for a prolonged period, however it was aimed at forcing the prisoners to the extremes. Now these cells in which prisoners were forced to stand up for long periods of time were not exclusive to the medieval period. It might seem like they were hell on earth, and during the Second World War, they could truly be found in the hell on earth. The standing cell or Stellbunker was used by the Nazis and also the Soviets who called them a Kisha. Looking more specifically at their use within Nazi Germany, they were adopted to be used in a number of different concentration camps within the Third Reich. A Turanienberg concentration camp in 1933, the SA camp commandant, Werner Schaefer, would have two standing cells built in the basement of the punishment block, and the dimensions were so small that a prisoner could only stand. One prisoner in particular named Newman was held inside the standing cell for 192 hours and was driven to the point of insanity by his incarceration there. Also here the prisoners were also sometimes held in coffin-sized closets where they could only stand. After the liberation of many of the concentration camps, Prisoners would give their accounts of being held in cells like the Stellbunker and would give evidence as to how small these dungeons and cells actually were. It was clear that the standing cells were at Auschwitz and also Dachau concentration camps and were used by guards as a method of punishment. In fact, you can still visit these camps today and see the cells to see what the conditions were like. In terms of how long a person was kept inside, it was left to the decision of the Nazi camp commander. If a prisoner had committed a serious offence within the camp, they could be kept there for a number of weeks, possibly even up to six weeks inside the standing cell. Some prisoners were kept inside the cells for even asking for a second helping of food, such was the desperation. We know that prisoners were forced inside the hellish cell for even picking fruit from some of the trees that grew within the camp without asking for permission. There is also evidence of stays within the cells, lasting from a minimum of three days, to as mentioned a number of weeks. As the Second World War developed, Dachau concentration camp's capacity increased especially towards the end of the Second World War. As the Red Army and the Allies captured more of the Nazi occupied territories across Europe, the Nazis would move their prisoners from the camps near the diminishing frontier of the Third Reich to Dachau and other camps such as Bergen-Belsen. Dachau in late 1944 was rather overcrowded and the camp's command built standing cells. These had a small hatch on top for air, with a narrow door and an iron bar bolted to the cell. This saved room for punishment, and also made the prisoners suffer even greater. The cell at Dachau which was most used, was a single one that housed one prisoner, 
and the size was 29.5 inches by 31.5 inches. If you equate this to today, it would be like spending every minute for a prolonged period of time forced inside a chimney. One prisoner of war from Dachau, Max Hoffmann, wrote of his time in the standing dungeon. He said, It was a terrible state, as I thought that it was over for me. Everything was so callous and distant for me. I couldn't lie down, couldn't crouch, the best was to stand. Stand six days and six nights long. You touch the walls on both sides with your elbows. Your back touches the wall behind you. Your knees the wall in front of you. This is no punishment of pre-trial detention. It is torture. Straightforward medieval torture. I had bloodshot eyes, numb from the bad air. I was just waiting for the end. One other inmate would confirm that someone inside the standing cell would be given just a single piece of bread every three days. On the fourth day the prisoner would sometimes be taken out of the cell, given a normal camp ration meal, allowed to sleep on a wooden cot, before the whole ordeal would begin again. Sometimes the SS did not allow an interruption in the confinement, and one Czech prisoner would spend eight days inside the cell without any breaks at all. Some would not even be given a break from the cell to go to the toilet, and many had burns on their bodies from their excrement. Inside Auschwitz they would use a one-yard square cell. This would then hold up to four prisoners inside it in horrific conditions. This would be found inside Block 11 of the camp, and it is one of the most notorious parts of the camp. It was the place where much of the torture and executions would take place within. It was also between Block 10 and 11, where the firing squad would execute prisoners by lining them up against a death wall. Block 11 was the place where the standing cells and the special torture chambers were based. Some prisoners were locked inside the small cells for days, being forced to stand inside them. Some prisoners were even kept up to 20 nights and were forced to work during the day. This would mean they would get no respite at all. The cells would only have a 2 inch size hole for air to come through into the prison so the prisoner could breathe. Survivor of Auschwitz Joseph Crow would state after the war that he was held for 6 weeks inside the standing prisons and would be only given 3 meals in that time. He said how one prisoner was so desperate that he even ate his shoes. The infamous commandant of Auschwitz Rudolf Hurst would state that punishment inside the standing cells was strictly limited to 3 nights However, this was simply not true. So although the standing cells seem straight from a medieval horror story, they were found in the darkest depths of the Holocaust and the Second World War. What they show us is the extreme cruelty and lengths the Nazis went to to ensure they were breaking the morale, hearts and bodies of their prisoners. It's hard to comprehend what the prisoners went through inside the concentration camps, especially when it comes to their time spent inside the stair bunker. It truly is one of the most cruel, inhumane and barbaric parts of the Holocaust and the Third Reich. Once again, thanks for watching. To support our channel, please make sure to subscribe. And once again, thank you so much for watching.